what's up guys, it's Lego Hobo 910 here with another Lego video. And in this video I am reviewing uh, the series 17 minifigs and I'm not going in order of least to greatest or greatest to least or anything. I'm just going in the order that they are on the official sheet here. Starting here and then going around till we get to the end. So let's get started. The first minifig we have here is called the Pro Surfer. And my overall thoughts on him are he's just meh. He's not bad, and he's not amazing. He's just kind of a meh minifig. I like this surfboard. Pretty sure that's an exclusive piece. Probably is. It's a shark surfboard there, which he can actually stand on with those studs there. And then that can connect to base plates. It's a regular surfboard piece, but with that shark print. And then here's the actual minifig himself. He's wearing a uh, red and black wetsuit here like the way it looks. It's a nice design and there's some arm printing there. Sadly there's no printing on the back. Wish they would have put something on the back. I really like his hair piece. Don't think that's new but I like it and the color fits well. His face feels kind of like the stereotypical surfer dude with the whiskery sideburns. and yeah, His face is just a nice little smirk. No double face per, as per usual. Overall, I think he is just a man minifig. Really like the surfboard piece, though, and also really like the hair piece. Our next minifig here is the Circus Strongman. And overall, I think he's a bit better than the surfer, but not much better. He has this cool new weight piece. Pretty sure this is a new piece with a bar there and then two weights there, which have 100 on each of them. I like his dual molded legs, they're half black, half yellow, to create his big boots. Like the uh, uh, cheetah print leotard they printed on there, the printing continues over to the back with a brown belt. He looks very muscular, there's a lot of muscular printing there. And he has this uh, mustache piece which just clips around the neck, he's going to turn that around to the back so that way you can see his face there, which I feel doesn't look complete without the mustache, it looks really funky without the mustache. So. You should probably just leave the mustache there without it. He just looks kind of weird. and He looks angry, but just kind I don't know. He just looks weird without the mustache. I like the bushy eyebrows, though. and yeah, Overall, I think he's a pretty good minifig as well. Love the weight piece as well. Now we have the Gourmet Chef, who I actually really like. It's a very simple minifig. And normally with the series minifigs, I like things that are a bit more out there. And... I actually really like this one. I like the hat and hair piece, and I also like the fact that it's at a slight angle. Adds a bit more character. like the print of the pie piece here. Normally, it's just the dark nougat with the white there. On this, they printed some strawberries on there to make a strawberry pie. Also, really like this uh, wire whisk piece. Pretty sure this one is a new one as well. And it's actually made of a slightly flexible plastic, so this probably isn't going to break on you. And I like the way it looks. Now moving on to the actual minifig. I like her chef jacket there. And I like the fact that they continued it onto the legs. Except I feel the attempt was unsuccessful. Whenever they try to print white onto black it always looks funky. So I wish they maybe would have just left that out or done it much better. There is a bit of arm printing there like that. There is no back printing. Wish they would have done something there. And then on the back of her hair piece, she has a bun, she has two faces, it's just kind of slight smirk, and the big grin. I personally prefer the slight smirk over the big grin, because I feel a lot of Lego characters just have big goofy grins kind of like this, so I think the slight smirk adds a lot more character, and her accessories are really good as well. Now we have the animal slash food suit guy for this uh, series, who is the corn cob guy. And I really like him. He isn't as good as uh, the banana man from, I think, the last series, other than the Lego Batman series. I feel like the banana man was a bit better, but I actually really like him. They added a lot of texture here. It's all bumps. Really like this piece. Also, the fact that it wasn't just corn, they also included the cob there. Really like that. The face, I feel, is really cute and really useful. I like the big bushy mustache. No second face. Though the body and legs are very plain, I understand you're not really going to see 
the body and the majority of the legs, but maybe they could have done a bit of printing on the bottom, done some arm printing. Like, if we uh, pull out the Banana Man here, you can see he has double molded arms. They could have done something like that, maybe. I don't know. I feel like they could have done something more under the suit, but with the suit on, I like the way it looks. Now we have the Veterinarian, who... I don't really like as much. I'm sure a lot of people will appreciate this. Except, I don't know, I just don't feel a good connection with this one. I feel like it's a bit bland. I really do like this new bunny piece, though. Pretty sure that's a new mold. And they have a decent bit of face printing there. It has two uh, studs there, so it can clip onto base plates. Or, if you spend quite a while, you can clip it onto a minifig hand, though it is kind of hard. And then her hair piece here. Pretty sure this is a new one. Or at least this color would be new for it. It's in dark nougat here. I like the kind of low cut and the shaping of it. Really like the way that looks. Let's just take that off there. Her face here is just a little grin. No second face. The printing is fairly simple. It's just some surgical robes. On the front, they added a bit of a stethoscope. I think they maybe could have carried that over to the back a bit better. You can see a bit of the tube there, but to me it looks more kind of like a shirt collar than the continuation of the stethoscope. And then on the legs there, there's just the slightest printing there, which is a little name badge with a paw print next to it. And I'm not sure what the official name for this Lego color is, but it's kind of a sandish ocean blue. I really like the way it looks. And there's some double molded arms and then has hands in medium azure, which I really like. And Maybe that's dark azure, but they look very much like those surgical rubber gloves. Now we have the hot dog vendor, who is one of my favorites from the series. He's very simple, but he is just cute, and I really like the way he looks. He has one of these hot dog and bun pieces, which is actually two separate pieces. I'm just going to separate those, which is kind of hard. You have the hot dog, then the bun, and then you can just clip that in. And there's a stud on the bottom so that can connect to base plates or minifig hands. And then the other accessories fell out of his hand here. There's this big tray piece, which has a uh, stud on the bottom as well, so that we can clip on hands or base plates. And we have this uh, smoothie slushy cup, kind of fast food type cup, which they have made before. Pretty sure they haven't made it in just plain white. And my one complaint about his accessories is... I think they should have attached studs here, so that way you don't have to like balance these on or stick one on his hand and stick one on the base plate, because this things just fall off this tray very easily, especially the smoothie cup. So I wish they would have put maybe some studs or something there, but oh well. And then the minifig himself is very nice. I like the uh, tan legs there. I feel like it fits well with the red kind of uh, reminds me of Jake from State Farm or a Target employee or something. And then the red and white checked apron there with the smiley face and the name badge, the bow tie. I like the fact that they didn't make the uh, printing for the buttons uh, there straight. They kind of gave it a bit of a wobble style. It feels more like he's working at kind of a messier food, uh, fast food restaurant and that he's a bit more carefree. I really like this minifig. He just has a lot of emotion and character. The double molded arms there is always good. Back here, they have the tie for the apron, a bit of wrinkle detailing, the, tie, the other tie for the apron. Really like his hat as well, with the red stripe. His face here, once again, looks really carefree and happy, with some freckles and eyebrows there, he, and a big, big grin. I really like the way this minifig looks in general. So, on to the next one. Now we have the butterfly girl. And she has a very cute design, kind of looks like a ballerina a bit with the slipper print there and it kind of looks like a leotard for her top there but she isn't all that unique and isn't that great i do appreciate the new butterfly wing piece here pretty sure they've made that piece before but this is a new print and then uh her hair piece here i like the kind of half part there and the ponytail sticking off to the side if you take that off you can see there's some flower printing there there's also a flower on her face there. And she just has a bouquet of pink flowers here using lime green and then just dark pink there. And then it also has one extra flower because only three can fit on there and they always put them in fours. And if we take off her head here, we can take off that to reveal the missing back printing. 
She has a butterfly printed on her shirt as well, which I think is very cute, and it makes this piece a lot better than just leaving it plain, and it makes it feel a bit more collectible and unique. And then there's also some, like, strap printing there, which is what gives me the impression that it's a leotard. If you look on her toes there, you can see those slippers that I was printing out, uh, pointing out. So, on to the next one. Now we have the Roman Gladiator, who, even though he's fairly simple, I really like him. That might just be from nostalgia, because one of my very first series minifigs was from, I think, maybe series, like, three or four, and it was a Gladiator. So there's a bit of nostalgia here. And, uh, fun fact, he is a Rotari-type gladiator. You can tell by the trident. Normally, they would also carry a dagger and a net, though, so... I think it would have been cool if they included, like, a little net piece or something. And this is just a fairly basic trident piece, which I have a bunch of. And then, I really like his hair piece. Pretty sure that's a fairly common one. His face is decent. He looks angry, and... I like the scruffle. There is no uh, dual head, though. Also, the torso printing is really good. They included armor, except normally it's on the left shoulder, so that's a bit of a historical inaccuracy, like the muscle detailing. And the arm printing there to create some van braces. Also, the shoulder printing there with the gold piece for some shoulder armor with a line there. The leg printing is pretty decent as well. He's kind of a cloth piece there. Some cloth armor. Like the dual printed legs, half brown, half yellow. Create some nice boots, kind of like this strong man. Yeah, overall, in reality, the minifig probably isn't that amazing, except just nostalgia is probably one of the main reasons why I like him. And also the fact that it's actually a historical type of gladiator. They didn't just throw some weapons on a kind of Roman-looking soldier and call it a gladiator. So, yeah. Now we have the connoisseur. And why did they have to name something so fancy? Why couldn't they just call him Baguette Man? That would be so much easier and simple. I'm just holding this pug, and to be honest, this probably isn't a pug, and everyone's probably going to correct me in the comments. But I'm calling it a pug, and sadly, he can't really hold it because it's a two studs connected, though it can connect to a base plate well. I like the face printing, and this is a new mold. I really like the way that looks. And then he has this big baguette piece, which I've seen before. However many times I see it, I really like it. And I really like the fact that it's almost as tall as a mean thing. That's a big baguette. And why do I keep saying baguette with a French accent? I don't know. But that's a cool baguette piece. Then he has a beret on his head there. Just a simple black beret. Pretty sure they've made that piece before. And I like his face. He looks kind of puzzled. and It's a very stereotypical Italian face with a thin little mustache. And he has a red scarf and a black and white striped shirt, which carries around to the back. And black legs. Really like him. And I'm not going to call him Connoisseur every time I want to say his name because that's the one. So this is just Baguette Pugman. Wee wee. Next up, we have the Battle Dwarf. Why they couldn't just call him a Dwarf Warrior, I don't know. But I actually really like him. Once again, probably maybe because of nostalgia, because one of my first minifigs, I think it was in the same series as the Gladiator, was a Dwarf. Maybe that's why they couldn't name him Dwarf Warrior, because maybe that one was named Dwarf Warrior. The other one was much more armored and looked very different to this one, but they're both dwarf warriors and they're slightly similar so maybe i like this one because of nostalgia again also really like this thor's hammer piece printed in gunmetal gray with some bronze printing there that depicts a boar and some uh nails there kind of holding it together and then he has this axe which is using the axe bait blade piece in gunmetal gray and clicked on uh clipped onto a black handle there and then I really like his hair and beard combo with this big red mohawk, and that's more rubbery piece. It's not, like, super squishy, but it has some slight flexibility, so that's probably not going to break. And then his face here, let's just take that off over this kind of neck beard piece here. So that way you can see it a bit better. has a big kind of classic Norse Viking face. 
and some big red bushy eyebrows. And once you get that attached to this beard piece, it makes a pretty big beard. And once again, that beard piece is printed in red. And now with all that stuff removed, you can finally see the torso. I know, amazing. And you can see like some tattoo printing there going up, carrying over to that arm. And he has kind of a continuation of his pants, kind of a belt piece with some woolly, hairy something or other. I don't know, Norse armor. Pretty sure this is Norse at least. On the bottom of the torso and lots of muscle detailing. Like the dark red on his pants. And you might not be able to see it too well. But there's a dark orange stripe going around his legs. This will also give you a bit of a closer look at his belt there. Which once again has some bronze boar printing. There we go. And then I like the way they did his arms here where it's double molded. The top being yellow and the bottom being gunmetal gray. Because that gives him some larger van braces. Really like the way that turns out and the way it looks. So now we have the Retro Space Hero, and I really like him, and for some odd reason, he kind of reminds me of Marvin the Martian from Looney Tunes, the little green alien who has a very similar helmet, actually, that's probably one of the main contributing factors, who uh, is trying to blow up the Earth for various reasons, and Bugs Bunny or other Looney Tunes characters are always stopping him. I really like his helmet, it's kind of a Roman space adaption with the yellow frill on the top and some antennas. He has no double face, but the face he does have is this really big kind of smirk. Reminds me kind of the 60s Batman or something. Some old cheesy heroes. Like this new ray gun piece. Especially like kind of the Tesla coil at the end and the fin there. And let's just move this cape out of the way there. He has kind of a little atom symbol there with a dual molded arms with dark gray and the sand green, which is his uniform color there, the sand green. Same on this arm with the orange stripes there. They did that with his legs too, double molded with orange stripes. His hip piece here is in kind of a sand blue, which I feel matches very well, as well as that bit of armor there on the top. Now if we turn him around and this isn't one of the newer capes, so you can't really flip it up. It's kind of a crinkly one. There is no back printing, which is a bit of a shame. And I wish this was one of the newer capes, so that way it wouldn't be as crinkly. It won't get wrinkled, one of the more clothy new capes. That's my only complaint about him is his cape. Now we have the Yuppie. Yep, that's his official name. Or should I say, Yup, that's his official name. But um, shh. Uh, and he kind of reminds me of like some Hollywood star or something. Very rich person. Like his hairpiece, I feel it adds to that rich effect. And the kind of tinted, shiny sunglasses. As you can see, there's getting some shine off there when the light hits it the right way in the bottom. That's printed with kind of a reflective bronze and then some orange. Like the one eyebrow slightly raised gives him some more character. Really like this foam piece. It's just using a walkie-talkie printed in gray. And then they put some prints on here. A cheese slope with a number pad and a one-by-one -one tile with the speaker. Not sure why they decided to go with an old-style foam. Since he's kind of a celebrity rich person, I would think he would have, like, a smartphone. But I really like the way it looks. It's interesting and out of the norm. And then I really like his pink polo shirt under there. Kind of makes me think of him as kind of a rich golfer dude as well because of that polo shirt. The white jacket over the top looks nice. like the dual molded arms there with some printing there to make it look a bit more wrinkly and slightly more casual. Really like the way this guy turns out even though he's fairly simple. Definitely not one of my favorite minifigs in the series though. But I feel he's a very useful minifig. Now we have the Rocket Boy, and he's very cute. I like the classic space theme references on this minifig. There's many of them here, and he's just also very cute and interesting. Though whenever I say his name, Rocket Boy, the first thought that pops into my mind is, Rocket Man, I don't know the rest of the words to this song. 
Uh, if you know the name of that song, go ahead and put it in the comments. I want to see how many of you know it. And this is just one big molded piece here in light gray with some red fins and the interior is actually red, so it might be molded in red. And then the little bump on the top. Like the window there makes him look like he's in the rocket ship looking out of the spaceport. That just ends up looking really cute. This accessory here is a white uh, bar piece with then this clip on it to uh, the flag piece to create the uh, flag for when he lands on the moon. You can go ahead and plant that in the soil. And I like the fact that they didn't print that perfectly. They left a bunch of big white spots. It makes it look like he actually drew that on some paper and attached it to some sort of pole or something. And on the other side, it's the same. And in case you didn't know, that is the classic space logo with the rocket ship going around the moon. And on his torso, he also has the classic space logo there. I like the uh, dark tan legs and hands. It looks kind of funky without the rocket on, but when you add that on, the dark gray looks much better. really like him. I also like his face. He looks like a very happy, carefree kid. And then when you put that on there, he just looks so cute and happy. I like this minifig. I always like when they do just cute little kids. Now we have the dance instructor, who looks like someone you would see at your local gym uh, doing the dance instruction in those rooms. So... I feel it fits the part very much. I like her little water bottle piece using this one by one modified something piece. I don't know what to call that. I've seen it a bunch. It gives it uh, a look that like she could actually put it in her mouth and drink water out of it. Like the uh, whatever the piece on the water bottle is called that you drink out of, like that connects to the straw. I don't know these fancy words. And then this uh, one by one transparent. Uh, cylinder with the little print on there that says H2O in some pink and lime green. And I really like her hair piece. It's odd and I don't have many uses for it except it's a really cool hair piece in this uh, kind of odd color here of dark, kind of an off dark orange. Now if we take that off we can see her face much better with the blue headband. You can see some sweat dripping down her face. No second face as well. And her torso here has like this pink and black leotard there, which continues around to the back. Like the lightning printing there. She has some little blue workout bands on her arms. And for some reason, she's wearing cheetah print leggings under it with blue shoes. She looks kind of like a weird workout mom, I guess. I don't know. She's just kind of funky looking. But funky looking in a good way. I don't know. Still don't really know how I feel about this one. Now we have the Elf Maiden. And she kind of reminds me of uh, Galadriel from Lord of the Rings. I think they might share the same headpiece here. I think it might be slightly different though. It has the large elf ears printed on, which we've seen many times in the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit lines. With a bit of a silvery flower piece molded on back there and a braid. And her face looks very serious, like she's about to go into battle, which makes sense. And oh no, I just ripped her in half. There we go, now we can see her face slightly better. And there is no double face, and also no back printing. Her shield piece here is one of the older style kind of castle shields. I'm not sure if they still use those anymore, because they don't really have a castle theme. And it has some gold printing on it, with some blue. wonder why they... Molded in gray. I think they should have just molded it in gold. It would have looked much better. She also has one of the larger gold sword pieces. With dual molded arms once again. Creating some armor there. And if we look at her torso printing. Let's move that shield out of the way. You can see that the armor kind of continues over, over the front. And there is some silver and dark blue printing there. Except it's kind of hard to see. It's a bit easier to see in... Uh, real life than on camera, but it's very subtle printing, and I like the way it looks. And then there's some uh, lavender and some gold under, as if she's wearing kind of a blue tunicky cloak over the actual purple dress. It gives it a lot of depth and layers, and makes it look much more realistic. Now we have this mystery minifig. 
Not sure why they didn't show who he was in the first place. Maybe it was to get some mystery and hype going around him. But after they'd been out for, like, the slightest bit, there were already a bunch of people who had made videos of unboxings and such. So that way you could see what he looks like. And you can just search pictures. Plus, the silhouette kind of gives away the pieces, so it won't be that hard to feel out. I don't know why they did it. It feels just kind of like they tried to do some marketing campaign, except it didn't really work out the best. But the actual minifig is really good, I think. They would have maybe sold better if they had just shown who he was, because I really like him. He has this uh, tricorn hat there, and two of the flintlocks in gunmetal gray, which is a new color that we... I uh, haven't gotten them in before. So let's just take those out of the way because there's a lot of layers to this minifig. And as you may or may not know, normally on the back they show how to build some of the more complex minifigs and what order to put certain things on. And since he was a mystery minifig, they couldn't do that. So he was kind of hard to assemble. I mean, as hard as a minifig can get, he's really not that hard to assemble because he's a minifig, but harder than most minifigs. I like the way the face looks there with the sideburns and the angry uh, mouth there. And the slightest bit of discoloration around the eyes makes him look very angry and tired. Then he has this kind of a bandana piece around his neck. Then he has this cloak here, which isn't just a normal cape piece. It also has these slight flaps, which are supposed to kind of fold up. Except they don't really stay up. They kind of flap down, but looks cool anyway and then his torso and legs here look very piratey with the ruffle there and the jacket the belt and the gray jacket underneath sadly there is no back printing the legs are dual molded might be kind of hard to see on camera because it's black and dark brown dark brown hands like the arm printing there with the buttons and the slight line detailing there overall i really like this minifig and I think he would have sold better if they had just not made him a mystery. If they had just let the series be and just let you know what everyone is. I feel like they would have sold him better because he's really cool. And he's like kind of a piratey minifig, kind of a western minifig. So I don't know, I really like him. So overall, I feel this series was really good. All the minifigs are good. And they tried a lot of new techniques with a lot of double molding. There's a lot of new prints and molds in this. And, well, there is always a lot of new prints for faces and torsos because they're all meant to be unique and exclusive. But I'm talking, like, on existing uh, pieces such as this. There's some new prints. There's also a lot of new molds, this and that, for an example. Here's another example of a new print on one. And I feel like they did a very good job here, though I feel like they would have sold the Highwayman here better if he hadn't been a mystery. Whoever came up with that idea out Lego, it seems like a good idea, but in reality it doesn't really work because you can just Google a Series 17 mystery figure, or if you know what his name is, such as me, I knew his name was the Highwayman, you could just search for Lego Highwayman and he would pop up. It's... It was a decent idea, except I feel the execution was done really bad, and I hope they don't try it. There's just a few minor complaints throughout the minifigs, but overall, they're fairly good, and peace.